<sighs> okay, it's learning time again. Let's learn how to do remote editing. Uh, this time, let me show you how to do uh, how we do our remote editing workflow in practice. You will be able to see uh, a uh, above, through my shoulder, beyond. No, what is the word? What is it like? Like here, you watch, and then you over the shoulder. Yeah, you can see over the shoulder how we do our actual video editing work. This is the second part in a series about remote editing. In the first part, which you can find here, it will talk more about the file syncing system that we use not only to move files, but sync files and assets over the internet uh, uh, in our remote editing team. And uh, this video, we're gonna talk about the actual workflow. And this system and this workflow is really good for remote uh, teams who need to move big files over the internet. And for individual uh, editors or colorists, maybe it's just like you, who want to uh, remotely, remotely edit other people's footage and send it back, the, send the, the, the done results to their clients again. And this system is very easy. It doesn't require any hardware or it doesn't require you to set up any servers or anything nerdy or complicated like that. And if you are a content creator who needs help with editing, below this video you can find a link to our website and from there you can find our contact details, like contact form, where you can contact me and I can hook you up with a remote editor who is using the same system that we're gonna be going through in this video. So, in this video we're gonna talk, uh, there should be two parts. We're gonna talk about first, are we gonna go to a bit of a recap of our file syncing system, so you don't need to go and watch the other video. You can of course, but uh, you don't need to. And then in the second part, we'll actually uh, kind of show you as a screen, uh, screen capture and a bit of a role playing how we do the workflow. So our file syncing system, uh, the cloud system, the cloud part of our system is Google's G Suite business. And this is like a whole cloud uh, solution. It has the file storage, but it has as well your, like I have my own email with my own domain. It has remote meetings. It has a, a full office suite. But the thing that we are mostly interested in this uh, video is the Google Drive uh, functionality. Um, there is a cheaper version of the Google G Suite uh, called G Suite's Basic, but uh, the uh, G, G Suite business uh, that is a bit more expensive actually gives you unlimited storage, so I don't mind. So that, uh, that's why I don't mind about the uh, higher price. And then for the actual file syncing, we use an open source software called Free File Sync. And uh, this is free and it's a uh, very feature rich, so it will give us a lot of control on what and how we sync files. So next, let's go through the workflow in action. And to do that, I'm gonna do a bit of a role playing and uh, to understand kind of better. We have three roles. We have the client. Oh, let me somehow uh, differentiate the client because I will be playing the client. Uh, just a second. Yes, this is my client hat. So when I'm wearing this, I'm the client. And when I'm not wearing the client hat, I am the organizer, so the person who gets the footage from the client and sends it to different ed editors. And then we'll be have a third uh, role, which will be played by my editor Shirley, and that's the editor. So as an organizer, the first thing that I do is to sign into Google and open up Google Drive. When we are starting to work with a new client, I will first create a shared drive and I will create a folder for our first project. Inside the uh, folder, I will create an original footage and done files folders. The first one is for the client to upload the footage and the second one is for us to deliver the end results to him. Uh, then um, I will create a folder for our client inside our own drive and then underneath it, I will create a folder for the first project of ours. In this first folder, I will create materials, done and projects, these folders. Uh, these are uh, our default folder structure, but you might add more folders or have more complexity to this. So why did I create one shared drive and one shared folder? Uh, there is two major differences between shared folders and shared drives. One is that you can't sync shared drives with free file sync. So that's why we use shared folders to sync our files with our teammates. The other difference is that with shared drives, 
the uploader, aka the cl client, doesn't become the owner of the file. If you would only use shared folders, the client would need to have as much storage in, uh, in his own Google Drive account as he wants to upload, because uh, he would be the owner of the files. Uh, with the shared drive, we use our, our uh, unlimited storage, not the client's limited one. Uh, next, I will share the drive with my client. And of course, he needs to have a Google account, but he can use the normal free version, which is free and fast to set up anyway. And of course, if your client is very untech savvy, you could alternatively use something like Massive IO to create a personal upload link to him that he can use without any signups or sign ins. But Massive IO is relatively expensive to use, and you still need to get the files to your Google Drive eventually, so it's better that the files are uploaded directly there. So now, as a client, I will accept the uh, shared drive invitation and open it up and drag my drop my files here. I can drop whole folders and the folder structure will mirror on the Google Drive side. After the upload, I will notify the organizer. Now that we have the original footage from our client, I will move it from the shared drive to the corresponding folder in our shared folder so that we can sync it to our editors. Next, I will add an editor to our team. It can be done on the user management in the G Suite. I have already created account for Shirley, so let's get back to Google Drive. Now I can choose what I want to share with my editor. I could share our whole file system with our assets and LUTs, or just a new project folder that I created for our client. After sharing the rights, I will now call my editor and brief her about what to do next. Hiya. Hi, Shirley. Uh, there's something for you to edit on the Google Drive. You want to download it and do it? All right, I'll do it right now. Okay, good. All right, so first of all, I will open up Free File Sync and then sign into our Google Drive with my account. Then I will set up my folder sync pairs. I'm already syncing our assets and LUTs, so I will only add this new client project folder uh, to my external hard drive and then set up a sync pair. I have my local folders located on my external hard drive and the structure is the same as we have on the Google Drive. So then I press the compare button and it will show me what operations the program is going to execute. Before I press the sync button, I will just tweak a few settings. I will check that the syncing mode is set to two ways and then check ignore errors and set the automatic retry to five and delay to one second. The parallel file operations, I will set to five and five. These settings will make the syncing process a bit smoother and faster. The last option is only available if you donate some money uh, to the developers of the software on their website. So I would recommend doing that. I will now save my folder sync setup for easy access later on, and then I'll press the big sync button. It will open up this sync window and show the progress. I can hide the window and just let it do its thing. And guys, before you press the synchronization button, it's a really good practice to check what is going to be happening and look out for these red remove icons and just make sure that they are actually something you want to happen. For example, if I go to my trash, I can see that this file is accidentally in my trash, I'm going to put it back. Another file that seems to be, uh, it's going to be removed is missing from Google Drive. If I go here, I can see that I have accidentally put it on trash here. So I'm going to restore it by right clicking and then uh, this one conflict item, uh, these ones I need to check manually to check, check what's going on. And for example, in this case, I have accidentally put it in the trash as well. So those look out for those. And then sometimes you have these situations where your softwares have written some new metadata into the file and the file size has changed. It's going to upload the file to Google Drive, but that's very slow. So instead I'm going to download it back because the metadata is not that important. And those are the things that I recommend checking before you press the synchronization button. Other softwares do this automatically, but in free file sync, you have the option of actually looking into and doing much smarter decisions when you're syncing. So back to you, Shirley. After the files are synced, I will start editing. We have a very simple naming convention to prevent people from working on the same files at the same time. Um, and that is just to add your own name at the end of the project when you save it. The same system works regardless of what software you use. We primarily work with Premiere Pro, but the same thing would work with Resolve as well. Though in Resolve you would have to uh, ex export and import the projects instead of just opening and saving them. But otherwise it's just the same. So after I'm done with my rough cut, 
I'll save the project and run free file sync again to upload the files to the cloud. Then I'll call Jonas to let him know that he can take a look at the rough cut. Hello. Hey, yo. Hi, I did a rough cut already. You want to go and check it out? Okay, I will. Thanks. All right, bye. So now I will run free file sync on my side and get the project files to my hard drive. I already synced the original footage earlier, so I only need to get the project files. When I open the project, it might ask me to locate the files on my computer, but as long as we have the same folder structure set up the same way on our external hard drives, it should find the corresponding files on my side automatically. So it's a good idea to name your hard drives the same way so the folder structure stays the same. And then when I open this software, the first thing that I do is to save as the project, switching Jerly's name to my name. And this will prevent us from working on the same file simultaneously and prevent syncing conflicts. I will write some notes here and save the project and sync it back to her. After the edit is done, Shirley will render out the video file and put it into the done folder for me to send it to the client. I will move it to the shared drive for the client to see. Uh, for the files we send to our clients, we use a simple name convention. It, it works like this, client name, dash, our name, dash, video name, dash, and then draft or done and hashtag version. And uh, this is a like, simple way of, for the client and us to kind of keep track which file is the actual, like the latest version. After I have moved the files to the shared drive, I will notify my client. Okay, I will look at the video and give some feedback. Mm, I really like this part, but could you make me a bit uh, taller? I'll add the second, uh, second mark, so the minute and second time here, so they know what I'm referring to. And done. Okay, and now I will let my editor know uh, of the feedback that the client gave us and ask her to do the new revisions. And after about, let's say, 16 revisions, the client can now download the video and even upload the video directly to YouTube from Google Drive. So now you know how we do our file syncing and our remote editing in, in practice. And I guess you didn't uh, capture, like, get the whole grasp, the whole concept well, with one go. So I recommend you to rewatch and make some notes. And if you're interested to see the first part where we talk about different solutions for file syncing, you can find it here. And below this video, you can find links to the services that we use. And uh, there's, a contact, uh, there's a link for our website as well, where you can find a contact form, where you can contact me if you need help with editing, and I can hook you up with one of our remote editors. And for the rest of you, subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos.